I want to make it crystal clear that I am not a hate preacher. I do not incite violence. From the videos that you guys have watched, do I incite violence? Do I incite hatred, my brothers and my sisters? Right? As the enemies of Islam always do. Whenever there is some goodness that Muslims are trying to spread, they are trying their utmost best to shut down these programs. And with me, it was no different. Even in the UK, I did this whole university tour, 27 universities. And you had those blue head feminists, right? And the rainbow team trying their utmost best to shut down the programs. And guess what? They failed miserably. They fell flat on their faces. And here we are again, they're trying their utmost best, right? I want to also make it very clear that I am not anti-Semitic, right? In fact, my father-in-law is actually Jewish. For those who didn't know that, whenever he comes over from France, I take good care of him. I put a hole in my pocket because of how much money I spend on him. I take good care of him, right? Just because we have different views and opinions based on the scripture, that doesn't necessarily mean that we incite violence or hatred, right? They will keep on trying and trying to shut down this khair. They will try to bombard the organizations and the masajid to shut out this goodness. Right? And I just want to thank and show appreciation to all of the organizations. And likewise, this one, I know it comes with a level of heat, right? Fear mongering tactics are used to scare the masjids. Don't do this, don't do that. Bullying them around. But Alhamdulillah, I always thought that Canadians were soft, right? Not a single one of the masajid even budged a single bit. Jazakum Allahu khayran wa barakallahu feekum. Canadians have a special place in my heart. Right? In today's lecture, my brothers and my sisters, I want to speak about turuq al-shaytan fi ighwai al-insan. The different tricks and the traps that the devil has up his sleeve in order to mislead every single one of us. What we need to understand, my brothers and my sisters, is that the devil is out there to get us. Today, I will mention six tricks that the devil has up his sleeve when looking to misguide every single one of us. But before I do, the devil has set out to alter two things, my brothers and my sisters. He wants to ensure that two things are distorted. And this is mentioned in the Quran. Most specifically in Surah An-Nisa, the chapter that speaks about women. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the devil who took an oath. He took an oath, my brothers and my sisters. Imagine now, an enemy across the road to where you live takes an oath that he's going to break into your house. You are not going to sleep. You are going to ensure that this doesn't happen. You will call the police. You will do this. You will do that. The devil, my brothers and my sisters, he took an oath. He swore by Allah Azza wa Jal's might that he is going to mislead every single one of us. So Allah tells us in Surah An-Nisa, what is the first thing that he said? He's going to make sure that he misleads us. How is he going to mislead us? Is it mentioned at the end of the verse? Whoever takes the shaytan as a wali. This is now a matter of aqeedah, a matter of belief. Al-wala'u He's going to make sure that he distorts your aqeedah, your creed, your belief. He's going to ensure that he strips you of your faith. Right? This is what he has set out to do. The second thing, my brothers and my sisters. He's going to ensure that the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is distorted. 
To be more clear, the outer appearance. This is what he has set out to do. You see the outer appearance? Let me ask you all a question. This verse is being mentioned in Surah An-Nisa. Right? When you look at both male and female, who tends to change and alter the outer appearance more? Is it male or female? Let's be honest, my brothers. If I say it, I might get called a misogynist. Huh? Who tends to alter the outer appearance more? The male or the female? Not you guys. Let me ask my sisters. Huh? Is it male or female, sisters? Jazakum Allah khair. Nose job, lip job, eye job, eyebrow, forehead, everything. Right? And even the ears. Sahih. Allah mentioning it in Surah An-Nisa didn't happen by chance. He is alerting and notifying our sisters more specifically. Does it mean it's only specific for the sisters? No, my brothers and my sisters. Am I wrong to say that men are altering the outer appearance as well? Chopping and cutting things off? Especially now, my brothers and my sisters, while the world is becoming so, so colorful, isn't this in full swing? Is it only specific for women? No, it's not. Right? It is not, my brothers and my sisters. A lot of things are being altered and changed. Right? And if you look at the connection between the two, changing the outer appearance and then also the belief. Let's be honest with ourselves. When one now dresses a certain way, or he puts on a certain type of dress, right? Or clothing, or alters the outer appearance, there is a sense of belonging. They begin to feel that they have a sense of belonging to a particular group. Am I wrong to say that? They will fit in a lot more easier. Right? You look at a little child now, my brothers and my sisters, when you clothe the child with army clothes. To make something very, very clear, I forgot to mention at the beginning. Just in case we have CNN or Fox News in the crowd. Right? I'm not here recruiting when I talk about army clothes for the child. But you go to the shop and you buy what? Army clothes and then you what? You clothe him with it. What's the first thing that a child is going to do? Huh? He's going to start doing this. He's going to start making the gun signs. Huh? You put army clothes on him. A two-year-old or a three-year-old, you put the hijab on her. What's one of the first things she's going to start doing? She's going to go to the prayer mat. The way we dress and how we make our outer appearance, my brothers and my sisters, goes a very long way. Right? With who we fit in. And what we end up doing thereafter. Right? So the devil has set out to alter these two things, my brothers and my sisters. Now things are falling into perspective. The next verse that I want to mention, Allah says in the Quran, أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَى الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا نَصِيبًا مِنَ الْكِتَابِ يَشْتَرُونَ الضَّلَالَةِ وَيُرِيدُونَ أَنْ تَضِلُّ السَّبِيلِ Haven't you seen the people of the book? Right? And the people of the book, they were given a portion of knowledge. They had knowledge. They knew what they were doing. It wasn't out of ignorance. What did Allah tell us? يَشْتَرُونَ الضَّلَالَةِ They buy misguidance and deviation. They spend their money to spread deviation and misguidance, my brothers and my sisters. And they want you to go far, far astray. Right? If this is being mentioned about the people of knowledge from the people of the book, right? And this is just me quoting, Abu Taymiyyah doesn't have his own views and opinions, guys. As long as you quote the scripture, you're fine. Go ask your solicitor and lawyer. As long as you quote the scripture, everything should be perfectly fine. Here Allah is telling us about the people of the book, the Christians and likewise the Jews. This is what they do as per the scripture, the Quran. If this is being said about them, how about anyone else? How about anyone that's not religious? Right? Does anyone know how much America spent in 2021 on making the world so colorful? Does anyone know? Is it in its thousands? Hundred thousands? Is it in its millions? Billions? Huh? Does anyone know? A lot of people are saying billions. Do you guys agree? 
you're all wrong. Right? It's in its trillions. 1.4 trillion they spent in 2021 in ensuring that the world becomes a very colorful place. 1.4 trillion, brothers and sisters. Right? The whole system, when you think about it, and we wake up to it, my brothers and my sisters. When Islam is spoken about, it's freedom of speech, right? You burn a particular flag, it's a, it's a crime. It's illegal. Look how the Quran is being burnt in Sweden. Right? The Quran is being burnt, it's being set on fire. Right? Freedom of speech. But when it comes to burning the Swedish flag, and let me make it clear, right? I'm not encouraging anything like this. I'm just quoting the reality of the matter. It is illegal. Someone came up to me yesterday after the lecture and he showed me two posts that he had and I took a picture of it, right? He says, two teens arrested in burning of pride flag in Mississauga. Is that how you say it? Mississauga. Police says. And then he shows me another page. He says, it is illegal to burn the Canadian flag in Canada. Right? We have these different rules and regulations wherever you go. Right? But when it comes to the Quran, will it be the same type of reaction, my brothers and my sisters? When you want to speak about Al-Islam, right, in a negative manner, do we get the same reaction? Right? Sometimes we think that liberal values are actually in our own best interest. Or is it just so everyone is protected except Al-Islam? We will come on to all of that, inshallah ta'ala, my brothers and my sisters. What we need to understand, my brothers and my sisters, and the Messenger sallallahu told us this 1400 years ago. He said, Min ashrat al-sa'a an yaqill al-ilm. From the signs of the hour, that knowledge becomes less. Ignorance becomes prevalent. Wa yadhhar al-jahl. Wa yadhhar al-zina. Zina becomes extremely prevalent as well. I think everyone knows what zina is, right? Sexual intercourse outside of marriage. I was in Edmonton and I'm just quoting again. I hope it's not like that here in Toronto. Right? I went to Edmonton. They said to me that here in Edmonton, the parents, they encourage their children to have these haram relationships. The sister will come home and she's with Mark or John. And she's saying, Dad, this is what? This is my new boyfriend. And he eggs her on. Right? He eggs her on, encourages her. Mafi mushkila. No problem whatsoever. Right? And then it, the hadith came to mind. Zina becoming extremely widespread. And likewise, killings and taking innocent lives will become so widespread as well. Right? This is the state of the end of times. Shaitan's plan is in full swing. Changing and altering the creation of Allah and your belief. He wants us to be ignorant. Right? He wants us to be without knowledge. Ibn al-Jawzi, rahmatullahi alayhi, who died in the year 597, he said, أَعْلَمْ No. أَنَّ أَوَّلَ أَوَّلَ Right? The first deception of Iblis upon the people was to take them away from knowledge. It was to busy them away from knowledge or to discourage them from knowledge. A lot of people think that when we seek knowledge, you only do that if you want to take a career path in that. If you want to become the next big sheikh, that's only when you seek knowledge. No, my brothers and my sisters. Right? It's not like engineering or pharmacy or this and that. Even the doctor and the pharmacist is in need of knowledge. Otherwise, he can't function in this world. Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters. Uqsimu billahi al-azim. I get contacted by doctors, pharmacists, engineers, multi-millionaires, right? They've made it. We all want to be like that, right? This is what we encourage and there's nothing wrong with becoming a pharmacist or becoming a doctor. In fact, it's great. You're a big benefit to the community. However, right? They are going through so many challenges in their lives. They become victimized to their environment. And they're crying out, please brother, help me. I feel spiritually dead and empty. Right? And sometimes I think to myself, subhanAllah, if this brother had just a little bit of knowledge regarding his situation, then maybe he wouldn't find himself like that. 
For those who came to Khalid bin Walid, put your hand you came to Khalid bin Walid or Abu Hurairah. Ajeeb, only 10 people. 20. I thought everyone was following me around. Huh? MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. In Toronto, there's a lot of Muslims who want to hear khair. May Allah honor every single one of you guys. I read out personal messages that I received on my Instagram from brothers and sisters, right? Who fell victim to a zina. You know, sometimes when we say don't do zina, people turn around and think, Islam, man, Islam is always tying us down. It's always giving us a hard time. Stopping us from having fun, right? Why can't I just enjoy myself, go to the club? These non-Muslims seem like they're having a great time. But then Islam, Islam, Islam. We talk about Islam like some human being. I read out a statement or a message from a sister and then also a brother. Wallahi, brothers and sisters. And they will tell you, and I don't want to go into it because it's going to take some time me reading it. The brother said, please help me six times in that message. I'm heartbroken. She dumped me. The sister likewise, 16 years of age, I've been dumped. I can't stop thinking about him. I'm depressed. I'm sad. I'm miserable. This is the state. When we say to you guys, don't do X, Y, and Z, you think, oh, why is this guy so conservative and so traditional and so rough and tough, right? Go do as you wish, my brothers and my sisters. The ball's in your court. Go enjoy yourself, sarcastically speaking, right? And then see the consequences after that. And then you will wish, right, that I listen to that advice. Everything that Allah tells you to do and that which He tells you to stay away from is in your own best interest, whether you see it or not. Right? So He says, the first deception of Iblis, Sadduhum anil ilm, to block them away from knowledge. Why? Because ilm is a light. Right, it helps you navigate and maneuver around fitna to shubuhat, the fitna of doubts and the fitna of temptations. We just went through Surah Yusuf. You know when the lady tried to trap Yusuf and she said, let's get it on. Hey, Talek. All of the different things that Yusuf done in order to protect himself. That's ilm, guys. They walked away. At least now, if I find myself in that compromising situation, I know how to operate. I know how to fortify and protect myself. Ibn Juzi says, لِأَنَّ الْعِلْمَ نُورُ عِلْمِ is a light. فَإِذَا أَطْفَأَ مَصَابِيحَهُمْ خَبَّطَهُمْ فِي الظِّلَامِ كَيْفَ شَاءَ Once this light is switched off, just like if you switch off the light inside of your living room with all the tables there, what happens? You'll start tripping around, right? You'll trip here, left, right, center. صح? You will struggle to stay on your feet. Likewise, if you are in a forest and there's no light, no torch, you're going to see yourself tripping up. صح ولا لا? Ilm is like that. أو من كان ميتاً فأحييناه Allah says. Haven't you seen the person who's dead? But we brought him back to life. Brought him back to life with what? With the Quran and the Sunnah. The ilm, my brothers and my sisters. وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ we gave him a nur. We gave him the torch which allowed him now to navigate when he was dark. That's with ilm, my brothers and my sisters. Now you can maybe compare our situation, right? To the darkness that is being spoken about. That which was from the musallamat. Things that were non-negotiable in our religion. Now it's being what? Discussed. Well, am I wrong to say that? Matters that were non-negotiable. Because we are being bombarded with it, right? It's becoming the mainstream view. We're thinking, oh, maybe they do actually have a point. Maybe 50, 60 years ago, it was unheard of. This kind of something. Right? Also, Ibn al-Jawzi, rahmatullahi alayhi, in his kitab, Talbis, Iblis, he says, Al-Bab al-A'zam, Al-Ladhi yadkhulu minhu Iblis, Ala nas huwa al-Jahal. The greatest gate that shaitan creeps through to mankind is ignorance. Right? فَوَيَدْخُلُ مِنْهُ عَلَى الْجَاهِلِ بِأَمَانٍ وَأَمَّا الْعَالِمِ فَلَا يَدْخُلْ عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا مُسَارَقَةٍ He gets through this door, creeps through it to the ignorant very, very easily. But he cannot get to the knowledgeable person except by pickpocketing him. You know theft? The guy is trying to pickpocket you? 
is going to make sure that he moves very, very carefully. Then comes behind you and then what? Slips it out of your pocket. But if you're ignorant, he's just going to come like this. Huh? Straight to your face. And you're not going to know how to navigate around it. Right? Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi also says, Iblisu innama yatamakkanu min al-insani ala qadrati ala qadri qillat al-ilm fakullama qalla ilm al-insan kathura tamakkunu iblisi minhu aw kathura tamakkunu iblisa kathura tamakkunu iblisa minhu wa kullama kathura al-ilm qalla tamakkunuhu minhu the more ilm you have the more difficulty you will find to get through to you the more ignorant you are the more easy it's going to be are your brothers and sisters with me right now we know a person who's knowledgeable he's going to struggle with him you don't know he's going to come to you from every single direction my brothers and my sisters now what are these six tricks that the devil has up his sleeve in order to misguide you and by the end of these six tricks that we will come to know about my brothers and my sisters, you will indeed know where you stand with the devil. The first, my brothers and my sisters, يَقُولُ لَكَ أُكْفُرْ He will try to get you to disbelieve. Right? He will try to get you to disbelieve. فَلَوْ فَعَلْتَ ذَلِكَ إِرْتَاحَ بَالُهُ You disbelieve, خلاص. He will be at peace. He will rest. He will stop paying too much focus to that individual who has disbelieved. Right? Kufr, khalas, is the worst possible sin. If you die upon disbelief, if you die upon shirk, game over. However, if one dies upon a tawheed, but he had sins, he's under the will of Allah. Allah may choose to forgive him. Allah Azza wa may choose to punish him for it. But sooner or later, he will come out of the hellfire. As for kufr, no chance. Right. A lot of the time, my brothers and my sisters, when we speak about kufr and shirk, the first thing that comes to mind is prostrating to an idol. This is not the only type of shirk that the Sharia came to wage war against. In today's day and age, my brothers and my sisters, right? In today's day and age, kufr, right, comes in different forms and types. As the world changes, as morality shifts, right? Different types and forms of disbelief. Even Allah Azza wa tells us about the devil, right? When he took an oath, he said, ثُمَّ لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ I'm going to come from the front, I'm going to come from the back, I'm going to come from the left and the right. What does it mean him coming from the front? Abdullah ibn Abbas. Who's Abdullah ibn Abbas? Huh? Who's Abdullah ibn Abbas? Guys, this is not trick questions, huh? Huh? Sorry, I can't hear you. Naam, huh? He is the cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We don't just take any person's understanding when it comes to the Quran and the Sunnah. We need the companions understanding, my brothers and my sisters. This is how we worship Allah and this is how we understand our deen. It's not what Abu Taymi thinks or what my sheikh thinks or what your sheikh thinks. No. Quran, Sunnah, companions. Right? Abdullah ibn Abbas, he explained what this means, the devil coming from the front. He said, I'm going to give them doubts about the hereafter. And then him coming from the right, it means... I'm going to give them doubts about their religion. Him coming from the left means I'm going to get them enticed with the glitters and the glamours of this world. This is where their main focus will be. Till they forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? This beautiful lie, it will be so to them. And then him coming from the back, my brothers and my sisters, Right? السيئات يأمرهم بها ويحثهم عليها ويزينها لهم Evil deeds, he's going to beautify it. That which is filthy and evil, he's going to try and beautify it. Encourage you, for, encourage you to carry it out. 
right? You'll begin to think there's absolutely nothing, or you'll be in denial thinking there's nothing wrong with it. Right? يَقُولُ لَكَ أُكْفُرْ He will try to get you to disbelieve, my brothers and my sisters. Right? What I'm going to touch on, my brothers and my sisters, here is, right, this intellectual type of disbelief. Because of modern day technology and modern day advancements, right, going to university thinking that you're some smart guy, right? Hmm? That your intellect is above everyone else. It is beautified for you. Taqdeesul aql, the glorification and the veneration of the intellect. You know better, this doesn't make sense. Just because it doesn't make sense to you or you don't have the answers, my brothers and my sisters, that doesn't mean there aren't any answers. I'll say that again. Just because you don't have the answers, that doesn't mean there aren't any answers. Right? Take this from me, my brothers and my sisters. Any thing that comes from other than Allah, you are bound to find contradictions. You are bound to find flaws, holes in the narrative. Right? You look at liberal values, my brothers and my sisters. Actually, let me go on to the matter of what is acceptable morality, uh, what is acceptable morally. Right? Why shall I start with this? Right? I speak to atheists all the time, my brothers and my sisters. I might speak to John. John says to me, this is morally acceptable. We shouldn't do this, we should do that. You go to Suzanne, right? Suzanne says, Mark is wrong or John is wrong. What is morally acceptable is this and that. Whose morality should we accept? Have you guys heard of something called um, cannibalism? What does cannibalism mean? Where you're allowed to start eating other people's flesh, eating other human beings. What do you guys think of it? Huh? What do you guys think of it? Nice, tasty, what is it? Huh? What do you guys think of it? Did you know that up until this very day, my brothers and my sisters, cannibalism, eating other human beings, is perfectly moral in some place around the world? Some parts of India, Fiji, Rottenberg in Germany, right? There are different laws and legalizations. Did you know that, my brothers and my sisters? That's not just the only places. Some places up until this very point, it is morally acceptable to eat other human beings. Huh? Let me ask you guys something else. This is just me asking. Abu Taymiyyah doesn't have his own views and opinions, right? What do you think of one having a relationship with his sister? Huh? What are you guys scared for? Huh? What do you guys think of it? But love is love though, right? Love is love. This is exactly the argument that we hear today. Love is love. Do as you wish. Liberal values. You have every right to exercise your freedom. Sahih? From the fruits of liberalism. Sahih? Tell him ask us another question. Having a relationship with your own father. Excuse me, brothers and sisters, for mentioning these examples. Right? Our children are being bombarded with information. It is being shoved down their throats and rubbed on their faces. What do you guys think of that? Is there anything wrong with that? But again, guys, love is love. Just like water is water. Go to the toilet and drink that water, right? Let me ask you guys a question. Making love with an animal. Having a relationship with a horse. You are already allowed to identify as a cat. Right? Pierce Morgan came out the other day and he wrote from today, I identify as a cat. The world is becoming upside down, right? Look at the way everyone is reacting. They reacted like this 60 years ago. When this discussion of, you know, same thing, you're right, was being brought up. Isn't that so? But now, perfectly fine. Mark my words. Right, mark my words. 
and I don't know the unseen, but it's only a matter of time before incest is made legal. Because they have the exact same argument. I've seen some clips that were taken down from YouTube. I've got it saved somewhere. Of people campaigning for this. And pointing out contradictions, right? You allowed it for them, what about us? Love is love. Everyone is entitled to whatever they wish. Am I wrong to say that, my brothers and my sisters? Right? Let me tell you guys about my friend Mark. I was on my way to Australia not so long ago. 20 hours from the UK all the way to Sydney. Transit, we had to go through India. One of the worst airports you could go to. Right? Every single time the flight was late. And as the flight is taken off, you feel like that the flight is about to crash down. With the way things start shaking. But Air Canada was much better. Huh? They gave us a great time. Wallahi al-Azim. Canadian people are really nice. Type. What is on transit? You've heard me mention the story, right? There's only 20 people here from the last program, so I'm going to mention it again. Just to really stimulate and work your minds, my brothers and my sisters. Hmm? I ran into Mark. We're going to call him Mark, right? We're going to call him Mark. I ran into him. We started talking. We're waiting for the flight, right? Everyone's bored. I said to him, Mark, why are you going all the way to Australia by yourself? I know why I'm going. What about you? Because I was meant to be going with my girlfriend, but we split up from one another. I was feeling a bit nosy, so I asked him, huh? why did you guys split up? He said, we started arguing about her speaking to the opposite gender via text message. I even caught her cheating on me via text message. And anything else? He said she would go outside wearing revealing clothes that I, I wasn't happy with. Me playing devil's advocate. I said, Mark, what's the problem? Right? Live and let be. Everyone should have the choice to do as they wish. Sah? Why are you being so controlling, Mark? I asked him, what did, you th what did she think of him treating her like that? She said she called me abusive, emotionally this, um, controlling, all of these names that she threw at him. Too forceful, stop pushing me into a corner, stop making my life a misery. I said, ah, right? I asked him, what is the issue? He goes, I'm not comfortable with it. You're not comfortable with it, huh? But live and let be, right? Do as you wish. Everyone's entitled to do as they wish. Liberal values, my brothers and my sisters. And then I said to him, if you were to get married to a sister that adheres to Islam, you wouldn't even need to worry about this. Dresses with the correct Islamic dress code. His jaw dropped. I think he was having thoughts about getting married to a Muslim, huh? Should have taken a shahada there and then. Right? A shahid min al kalam, my brothers and my sisters. Right? And then I asked him, What are you planning on doing next? He goes, I'm going to now find new love. I said to him, What are the chances that the exact same thing are going to happen? He goes, No, hopefully you won't. Right? I said to him, Mark. Right? When we don't have an external entity, and that is Allah the Almighty, that gives us rules and regulations, everyone will keep on looking at morality in their own way. What is acceptable and what is unacceptable. There's a very high chance that you are going to go through the exact same thing with Suzanne that you're going to meet. And then same problem. And then again, same again. You know when I arbitrate between husband and wife, right? Husband and wife, right? They're going through problems. So I'm sitting there. I ask, what is the problem? The husband says, I don't like the way she dresses outside. She says, he's being too controlling. Taiba asks her, what's his problem? She goes, he has inappropriate conversations with women. I ask him, why do you do that? Because they're just friends. Men and women can just be friends, right? Sah? 
he's sitting in the corner with his friend, right? His female friend. You ask him why he's doing it. He goes, helping with my assignment. Hmm? He's helping with my assignment. Men and women can just be friends, guys. I might say this and you guys are going to look at me extremely weird. Have you guys heard of Steve Harvey? Steve Harvey? Have you guys seen that viral video of Steve Harvey? Where he's talking about can men and women just be friends? Put it into YouTube. Right? He talks about how men, he's speaking on behalf of himself and everyone else. Right? How they're just waiting for that crack in the door so they can slip in. Am I wrong guys? Am I oppressing you? Anyone? Even Al-Gahtani rahmatullahi alayhi says, Inna rijala nadhirina ila nisa mithlu al-kilabi tatufu bil-luhmani Those men that are looking at women are no different to dogs. Right? You know a dog when he sees a piece of meat, a piece of flesh, he starts huffing and puffing, right? He's like that. He's saying men are like that. إِنْ لَمْ تَصُنْ تِلْكَ اللُّحُومَ أُسُودُهَا أُكِلَتْ بِلَا عِوَضٍ وَلَا أَثْمَانِ If these lions don't protect these women, they will be taken advantage of. But liberal values live and let be do as you wish. Right? This is why they're battling with one another, especially in today's day and age. Husbands and wives are each other's necks. To the point he says, you know what? Let her go do as she wishes. Right? Because we don't have an external entity that we keep going back to. We don't have that anymore. We might be taking inspiration from liberals, feminists, right? And whoever else it might be, the non-Muslim. And that's where we take our way of thinking and the way to structure our lives. And like I said, my brothers and my sisters, there will always be holes in the narrative with anything that comes from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? He's speaking to women. He's just saying, Akhi, they're just friends. Why is she being so controlling? What's the big deal? Does Allah allow him to do that? To just have these open conversations? Right? Is Allah Azza wa Jal okay with him doing that? You can see why she has an issue. And you can see why he has an issue as well with the way she goes outside. Right? This is why, like I said, they will continue their being problems within society like the problems we're already seeing the place will continue to be chaotic up until we come back to what Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said upon the understanding of the companions and the two other golden generations anyways I went on a bit of a tangent there sorry about that right what we were speaking about here using the intellect over the text where one now begins to think of himself that he's smarter than what Allah Azza wa sent down. Right? This doesn't make sense to me. Right? How many a time have I seen a sister? She walks into university. And by the way, by the way, guys, the way I look at university is that it is a breeding ground for kufr, shirk, feminism, liberalism, right? Fahisha. Everything is telling you, come. Haram, come. Tell me if I'm wrong, guys. I've been to university myself. I was doing civil engineering. I know what goes on, right? And of course, the rainbow team, extremely active, right? All of that, that which we see in universities, my brothers and my sisters, right? How many times have I seen a sister going there, holding on to her Islamic morals and values, and then she runs into sisters who convince her that she needs to look through the lens of equal rights. Let me ask you guys a question. Did Islam come to establish equal rights? Or did it come to establish justice? It came to establish justice, not equal rights. That's why we say, my brothers and my sisters, that even if a woman is a multi-billionaire, multi-billionaire, right? She still doesn't have to contribute towards the bills. She doesn't have to pay anything towards the bills. If she wants to, then great. But you now enforcing that upon her, going to the marriage meeting, and you're discussing with her how much she needs to pay, and how it's going to be the ratio of 50-50, Wallahi, that guy is wasted. If he does that. If she wants to help her, then great. You still have to clothe her, my friend, in a reasonable manner. Should we just go with equal rights, my sisters? Huh? What do you guys think now? Hmm? Or do you guys 
want to hold on to these rights that Allah gave you. Allah, the Almighty. Right. So a sister goes, she's convinced that the right way forward is to look through the lens of equal rights. And then guess what happens? She comes to the Quran, right? And she says, this is not right. This doesn't make sense. This is oppressive. Because on certain aspects, it is not equal between men and women. Do you know how dangerous the statement is, my brothers and my sisters? Allah oppressive. And he told us, وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا He does not oppress anyone. From the sentiments of feminism, my brothers and my sisters, is calling for the reformation and a reinterpretation of the deen, of religion. My brothers and my sisters, this statement here, is it a minor sin, major sin, or what is it? It leaves you on the fringes of the deen. It leaves you on the fringes of your religion, my brothers and my sisters. Right? Kufr and shirk is very different today, my brothers and my sisters. Right? How long do I have, Yam Shaykh? Should we stop or should we continue, guys? But millennials only have an attention span of 30 seconds. Huh? That's why you have those reels now, right? That only go on for 30 seconds because they realize that's how you can grab their attention. Does anyone feel offended by what I said? Anyone? Please, sisters, let me know. If you guys want, inshallah ta'ala, I'll quote Simone de Beauvoir at the end. Do you guys know who Simone de Beauvoir is? One of the founding mothers of feminism from France. Right? Like I said, Abu Taymiyyah does not have his own views and opinions. I, I just quote Betty Friedan. You guys heard of her? Betty Friedan, she's the American version of Simone de Beauvoir. And also, I'm going to quote for you guys, inshallah ta'ala. What British women say, according to some studies that were done by a very well-known news tabloid called Daily Mail. You guys heard of Daily Mail? The second trick that he has up his sleeve, if he can't get you to disbelieve, he's going to beautify what? Innovation. Right? Which one's worse, innovation or major sins? By the way, what does innovation mean? Introducing new practices into the religion. Right? Abdullah ibn Abbas said, Al bid'atu ahabu ila iblis min al ma'asiyah. Bid'ah is more beloved to iblis. Innovations are more beloved to iblis than sinning. Why? Because when this individual now does these innovative practices, he believes he's getting closer to Allah. Sah? But when someone's doing a sin, like he's doing a zina, he's got a girlfriend, he comes out, Akhi, please make dua for me. He knows that he's wrong. But the person who's doing innovative practices, he thinks he's getting closer to Allah. Something new that he invented into the deen. Does that make sense? Right? This is why whatever we do in light of our deen, we always need to ask. Was it mentioned in the Quran? Was it mentioned in the Sunnah? Did the companions practice it? The four great imams of fiqh, Imam Bu Hanifa, Ash-Shafi, Malik, Ahmed, what were their views on this? To get more of a perspective on this matter. Are you guys with me? The third trick that he has up his sleeve, my brothers and my sisters. If you manage to escape and the shaitan fails to succeed in the first and the second, the third, my brothers and my sisters. What do you think it is? The kabair, ahsant. Major sins. And in today's day and age, my brothers and my sisters, major sins have become so easy for us to carry out. Once upon a time, my brothers and my sisters, if you wanted to do some haram, you would, on the internet, you would have to go into the living room and there would be the big Dell computer with the big backs. Do you guys remember that? Big computer with the keyboard. As he's accessing haram, he's watching the door. He's watching like that. Do you guys remember MSN? These Gen Z's don't know. Huh? MSN, do you guys remember MSN? 
No one in their right mind would take that big computer and put it under his blanket, right? I don't think anybody would do that. Sahih. However, now, my brothers and my sisters, with these gadgets, right? With these social media apps, carrying out major sins have become so, so easy. Meeting up to do haram is just a fingertip away. Looking at filth and evil has become so, so easy, my brothers and my sisters. Right? Am I wrong to say that, guys? Shaitan is at work. Right? Looking to trap every single one of us. Right? Even now, this addiction that people have of adult content, my brothers and my sisters, it all started with what? An innocent glance. Oh, parents. Wallahi al -azim. It's so sad. Right? On a weekly basis, I'm receiving messages from both brothers and sisters who have now become addicted to adult content and some of them are as young as 11 years of age, 12 years of age. We handed over these gadgets to them, no problem. I understand why you are doing this. And you guys need to realize this as well. You want to get married, right? If you don't want to get married, there's something wrong. Come see me, right? And then later on, you want to have children. You, the excitement dies down after you get married. Now you want children. It comes with a huge responsibility. And the world is changing very quickly. I understand why you, why you want to hand it over. Because everyone has it. We don't want them to miss out. We don't want them to feel left out, right? But it comes with a huge responsibility. And what they're accessing, Right? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we've all memorized this verse, right? ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَيْذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ You're going to be asked about your blessings. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained it and he said, this blessing that you're going to be asked about is water and dates, al-aswadan. If you're going to be asked about that, right? We're not going to be asked about our phones that we spent with our money and then we gave it to our children. Even the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لَا تَزُولُ قَدَّمَ عَبْدٍ حَتَّى يُسْأَلَ الْأَرْبَعِينَ Your feet on Yawm Al-Qiyam will not move until you're asked about four things. One of them is your wealth. How did you earn it? What did you spend it on? Right. The major sins that are taking place on there. How it's completely destroying our youth. Right. As young as what? 11, 12. Today, the child, my brothers and my sisters, he doesn't just have two parents and he's got three. The child has three parents. His mom, dad, and who else? The phone. This is where he's getting his information and his worldview from. Am I wrong to say that, guys? Right? And sometimes what we do, we hand these gadgets over to them because we are busy. Sah? Series after series. Netflix series, this and that. Hollywood, Bollywood, Somaliwood. Right? This is what we're focused on and glued to. And then you go, go, here, take the phone. Wallahi, kids as young as two years of age, they know how to access Instagram. Wallahi al-Azim. But someone may say, what shall I do then? How shall I keep the child busy? Let me ask you, my brothers and my sisters, how were we busy when we were growing up? Did we have these gadgets? Why are we making it as if that it's from the things that are must and necessities of life? Shall I tell you guys something that leads to major sins? That we might just take so lightly and not think much of it. Ibn al-Qayyim has a kitab called Ighathatul Lahfan fi Masaid al-Shaytan. Where he talks about the tricks and the traps of the devil. Right? In it, he dedicates a chapter explaining the statement of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud when he said, الْغِنَاءُ يُنْبِتُ النِّفَاقِ فِي الْقَلْبِ You know music? It causes hypocrisy to grow in one's heart. Who said this? Huh? Did I say this? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the great companion who knew the Qur'an inside out. He said this. So Ibn al-Qayyim tried to explain it. What he means by this, right? He says, from, one from the things that he says is, وَكُمْ وَكَمْ مِنْ حُرَّةٍ سَارَتْ بِالْغِنَى مِنَ الْبَغَايَةِ How many, and he's saying this hundreds and hundreds, over 700 years ago. How many women, because of music, they became prostitutes. 
He said this over 700 years ago. You think the music that they had then was like the music that they have today? You know the filthy music they have today? Top five? Huh? You guys know? Top five? And this other guy that lives here in Canada called, what's his name? Drake. Huh? A'udhu billah min. May Allah Azza wa guide him and guide everyone else. You think the music back in the day was like the music that you have today? With all that profanity and filth and evil and they show half naked women or even women that are not wearing anything. Hmm? If it was going to what? Lead to zina then. What do you think now guys? All right. He also mentions that a lot of those who listen to music, they end up having one other problem. You know what it is, guys? They struggle with their prayer. From what angle, though? I've been given five minutes. How, though? We are being told that music is the cause of hypocrisy growing in your heart, right? He's saying a lot of people that struggle with, that, that have issues with music, also they have issues with something else. That's a salah. Why? Allah says, وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ huh? قَامُوا كُسَالًا When they stand up for prayer, Allah tells us about the hypocrites, they stand up in a lazy manner. Music causes hypocrisy to grow in the heart and then it begins to affect your prayer just like it affected the hypocrites. Right? This is everything now falling into perspective as to why my brothers and my sisters, we see certain things happening. Right? Number four, my brothers and my sisters. Number four. Number four. If he can't get you to do major sins, what happens? Huh? Al-Saghair. Jazakallah khair. Ahsant. He tries to trap you with minor sins. Right? And of course, this takes away from the high position that you will receive in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Right? My brothers and my sisters, you know, sometimes we say it's just minor, right? It's minor. It's not, it's not a big deal. Minor sin, not. خلاص, عادي, ما في مشكلة. Shall I tell you guys something that Ibn al Qayyim mentioned? Right? By the way, does minor sins and major sins take you out of the deen? Does it take you out of the religion? No, it doesn't. Don't do takfir, guys, huh? It doesn't take you out of the religion. However, you know, Ibn al Qayyim says, Al Jawziyah. الكفر. The sin that you fall into is the first spark to disbelief. Meaning, one thing leads to another, and another, and another, and it becomes major, and then that major, alongside another major, up until this individual now shoots out of the religion. A lot of the time, it's not surprising that one leaves the fold of Islam. It's really not. But it's not. And that's because he lived that kind of life for a very long time. So this is just maybe, for lack of a better term, the icing on the cake for him. That's why we need to make tawbah, my brothers. Every time, we all sin. Wallahi, the sheikh is lying to you if he tells you that he doesn't sin. We all sin. Every single one of us here. Right? Falls short. However, we have to return back to Allah. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how many times he used to sin? Uh, how, many, no, how many times he used to say, Astaghfirullah? 70 times. In another narration, 100 times. Right? If that's him, where do we stand? Where do we stand, my brothers and my sisters? Especially in this sexualized society where everything around you is haram. Or you're looking at something that is going to penetrate, right? Through to your heart. Number six, my brothers and my sisters, and this is the final one. And I'm done. Oh, sorry, five. Zakallah khair. Fifth one, my brothers and my sisters, if he can't get you to do minor sins, he's now going to busy you with that which is what? Less beneficial and rewarding. All right, less beneficial and rewarding. Let me ask you guys a question. Giving da'wah on your phone, is it good? Giving da'wah on your phone is good, right? Sending beneficial tweets making videos, reels, and all that stuff, right? The time when the salah kicks in, 
It's time to pray. Someone says, you know what? I'm just going to continue now giving da'wah. I'm doing a good thing anyway. Which one is more important right now? Salah. Shaitan beautifies, so you're doing something amazing. Wallahi, one time I heard somebody say, the adhan is going off. Okay, so, okay, we're, we're talking about Islam anyway. Don't worry, we'll pray later. And then I remember this fifth point. All right. Number six, my brothers and my sisters, and this is the final one. If the shaitan fails to succeed in all of these five things, he has one last trick up his sleeve. And this is something, my brothers and my sisters, that even the prophets could not prevent. What is it? He comes through your relatives. He's going to come through your relatives now to give you a hard time. Nuh والسلام, and his son is telling his son, Ya Bunayyar, come ma'ana. Get on the ship. Wala takun ma'al kafirin. He says, Don't worry. Sa'awi la jabalin ya'asimuni minim. I'm going to climb all the way to the top. And the flood won't be able to grab me. Right? The wife of Lut, alayhi salatu wasalam. You guys heard of Lut? Prophet Lut? Everyone should know Lut, especially in today's day and age. Right? Look up the story, look up the scripture, right? His wife, my brothers and my sister, was the one that used to set him up. His own wife. She would what? The shaitan would come through her to get to Lut, alayhi salatu wasalam. You know how sometimes they say to you, right? When you start practicing, trying to wear the hijab, oh, mashallah, look at her, trying to be so righteous, trying to be all so good. This is what they say to her. It might even come from our own relatives. And you start practicing, oh, just yesterday, yeah? Now you want to tell me what's right and what's wrong? Well, I one time heard an auntie say to her son, I used to clean your backside and now you want to tell me what is right and what is wrong? Right. Now, my brothers and my sisters, do you know where you stand with the devil? This will give us a very good idea of where we stand with the devil. What is the solution to a lot of that which we mentioned, my brothers and my sisters? We mentioned it right at the beginning. Al-ilm. Learning about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Ilm al-tawheed. Right? Learning the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. The more you learn about Allah. How do we learn about Allah? The only source of knowledge that we have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? Are his names and his attributes. That you take from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa I'm not talking about these debates that people have. I'm talking about learn who Al-Hakim is. Learn who Al-Raqib is. Learn who as sami is, right? Ibn Rajab, he mentions in one of his books, right? A woman and a man that were alone in a desert, they were Bedouins. And the male Bedouin began to seduce her, right? And he said to her, Mimma takhafin, why are you angry? Sorry, what are you scared of? What are you scared of? He's saying to her, what are you scared of? لا يرانا إلا الكواكب The only thing that can see us are the stars. This lady, my brothers and my sisters, who internalized, who is sami, the all hearing, the all seeing, the one who's looking over you and watching over you. She internalized that and she understood it because she learned about Allah. She said to him, أين مكوكبها? Where is the one who created these stars? Where is the creator of it? That struck fear into him and he went back. At-Tawheed, my brothers and my sisters. The more you learn about Allah, His names and attributes, the more you will have that fear and that consciousness and that ta'zeem, that glorification and very, that glorification and that veneration in your heart towards Him. Not only will you think twice, but thrice about carrying out the sin. Right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Again, I just want to, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, right, thank the administration of the masjid, the people who run the masjid, the shuyukh of the masjid, especially Fawzan, right? All the trouble that he had to go through setting this program up, 
He might have been doing night shifts. Allahu A'lam. Speaking to the brothers. Because the day and the night, they're up against one another. UK has a different time zone. And also for standing strong in allowing this program to go ahead. Right? And not budging when it came to this external pressure. Right? Look at all the khair that takes place in some of these programs. The amount of people that come out. And this is exactly what we need from our masajid. Right? These fear-mongering tactics are used to shake. But in reality, they are empty threats. Jazakumullah khairan wa barakallahu feekum. Introducing the One Islam TV app. The ultimate destination to learn about Islam with hundreds of educational videos, lessons, and documentaries. Experience our seven YouTube channels in one place. All content is music free. Download the One Islam TV app now from the Apple or Google Play Store today. Mm -hmm.